Hey guys, Jason here with a word to the wise. Um, I want to just show you guys a couple of things. Um, there's a lot of talk about the 923 code. I have a, a car next to me that is blasting me with reflective light off their window, so bear with me. Um, 923, a lot of people are talking about it, some sort of biblical code. Um, it's interesting because there are a lot of uh, timepiece, those in the religion, um, they have a lot of uh, calendar events coming up. 923 is the day after the fall equinox. The fall equinox is the equal part of light and day. What's interesting kind of about that equal, what hit me was, if you look at yin and yang, that is that symbol, and what does that portray? Light and dark. And what happens on that equinox day is it's falling into darkness. So if you do a lot of looking up and research, you'll find all these little, you know, quib bits of, you know, the interesting balance that yin and yang portrays, light and dark, um, happy, sad, strength, weak, but trying to find a lot of people that talk about it being about good and evil doesn't seem to be on everybody's lips so much, but 923 is the day as it slips more into darkness. So it'll be interesting to see if that is what is going to start happening after the September 23rd. Not saying that anything's going to happen dramatically because nothing has happened dramatically you know, in a while. I mean, yes, you're seeing a lot of the bug issues and things like that, but seeing something dramatic happen. You know, we're all waiting for that huge shoe to drop and it's gonna be, it's gonna catch everybody off guard, but you know, we continue to wait and see and they don't have to do anything. Everything is just slipping into this, this new world order. Um, so with that, I just want to, I just want to, you know, put that one thing out there. Also, there's a lot of talk about in the flat earth community. I, I got kind of sucked into that whole flat earth thing. And I do believe that the earth is flat. And I do believe that, um, you know, how that is looking at it from the outside in, I, I don't know. It, it'd be interesting because I'm sure we'll all see and know one day what's really going on and how it all really looks. What I found kind of interesting in a lot of these discussions and a lot of arguments that you have with people on the sun, moon, and stars, horizons, and how it all works cosmology-wise, um, is that a lot of people in the Christian community especially say that the moon is a, a secondary light system that was given um, and I've sat there and tried to defend that, you know, like, well, how do you know how this works? And people say, well, the sun reflects off the moon and that's just the way it is, you know, space, moon and La Mars and planets and, and trying to argue against that and prove that wrong that the, the angle of light on the moon is different than where the sun is. You'll, you'll never win that argument. But what I found and what I want to show you guys is that if you go into the Book of Enoch, if you're gonna use it as a tool, because I guarantee you, all those elites and secret societies and um, private schooling that happens for a lot of those elites, I'll bet you a million dollars that every single one of those people have gone through the Book of Enoch at least once as a study guide, and they use it, especially NASA, as a tool to understand what's going on and that's how they learn how to manipulate and change the ideas of man because they've got they've got the playbook of how these things work um, so if you go into the book of Enoch chapter 62 correction 72 and I just want to read you this this couple of verses right here and the first goes forth the great luminary named the sun and his circumference is like the circumference of the heaven and he is quite filled with illuminating and heating fire the chariot on which he ascends 
the wind drives and the sun goes down from the heavens and returns through the north in order to reach the east and is so guided that he comes to the appropriate portal and shines in the faces of the heaven so I'll, I'll get you guys a screenshot of that but now if you go to the next chapter it talks about the moon and see how they describe the moon Chapter 63 and after 73 I saw this law I saw an, another law dealing with the smaller luminary which is named the moon and her circumference is like the circumference of the heaven and her chariot in which she rides and is driven by the wind and light is given to her in definite in, in measure and they talk about here saying that the lesser or the smaller luminary but they also speak about in the book of Enoch how they are of equal size but the light given to the moon when the moon is full is only seven times as powerful or bright as the Sun so I also want to go down here um, verse 7 and she sets with the Sun and when the Sun rises the moon rises with him and receives half of one part of the light in receives see that's the thing I want to point out receives one half of the light so looking at the law of the Sun the Sun is a blazing and illuminating light but the moon receives that light receives the light given off of it um, I just ran across another one a second ago too I want to point out in in this let me just get rid of this bookmark um it was all right here yeah he says it so chapter 67 i'm looking at roman numerals so bear with me the sun and the moon the waxing and waning of the moon these are the two great luminaries their circumference is like the circumference of heaven and the size of of the circumference of both is alike in the circumference of the Sun there are seven portions of light which are added to it more than to the moon and in definite measure it is transferred to the seventh portion of the Sun is exhausted so light is transferred to the moon I just wanted to point that out because I found that very interesting in a lot of those flat earth arguments that people have and that I have had myself but here because I, I look at the moon all the time I look at where the Sun is setting I look at the angles and it's never off you know you can sit there and try to somehow proportion somehow of an angle of where the Sun is compared to where the light is and it's it doesn't work like that you know I've, I've never been able to disprove that the moon reflects the Sun's light and we also know that from NASA but we don't know the fullness of what that means so just a word to the wise guys there's also a, a chapter in the next pages in chapter 80 um, that talks about a lot of those things about when the Sun and the moon and the stars are spoken of that is in Revelation the prophets uh, Matthew 24 um, Sun moon and stars so that'll be for another time so just a word to the wise guys God bless I'll be back and what I what I want to just say real quick too is what I try to bring on this channel is not is not what I'm hearing from a lot of other channels this is not something I like to regurgitate you know that other people are speaking about and I'm finding that the more I am on YouTube and I'm watching channels like redacted Israeli news live um, and the way they speak you know redacted is not something biblical by any means but just listening to the news being portrayed and then same thing with Israeli News Live the news being portrayed I, I I find myself being turned off and I don't care about what 
you know, I care in a sense of like, I don't want harm coming to people because these things are happening, but it doesn't make any difference. You know, all we can do is take this news and pray for those people. But at the same time, it will not change anything of what is happening or, or it's going to happen. You're not going to go and you're not going to be able to impeach Biden and, and get him out of office. We're not going to do that. When the time comes, when the world, those who are in power, uh, the elites, the, the puppet masters, when they're ready, things move and they will continue to move because power is given to them over even the saints to to do what they are doing. They think that they're going to win. They think that they are doing um, the bidding of, of the fallen, the Antichrist, um, some sort of business moguls that are, are, are going to fuel them and make them wealthy or powerful. You know, all these things are just you know, it's all in God's hands. He is helping to make all these things go. And when the time is right, they will all be punished and the righteous will all be saved. Is it all going to happen at the same time? Is it all going to happen? You know, is every person going to be saved that is righteous? No, that's not biblical. You know, those enduring even until death. But when the resurrection time comes, at the end, the day of the Lord, like when uh, Jesus is speaking to, uh, I believe it's Martha, about her brother, and he says, you know, do you believe that he will rise again? And she says, yes, I believe that he will rise again on the day of, of the resurrection, at the end of time. And But Jesus, you know, hears her weeping, and they all weep, and he brings Lazarus back. Anyway, this is to bring, to show God's glory of, of the amazing things that he can do. So... With that, I'm just going to cut this off. Word to the wise guys. God bless. As always, it's going to be a lot more of the things that you're not going to find anywhere else. Like, share, subscribe, comment. Um, I'll try to get all these things put together.